great fortune to be with all of you this evening. Thank you for being here. Every year in the month of Kartik, we come together for a pilgrimage, oftentimes to Vrindavan town or Mayapur town or other such holy places. It has been our tradition over the last several years that on the sacred day of Govardhan Puja we spend the evening before and the whole morning cooking offerings and making beautiful preparations to celebrate. Many hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people all together on little clay or cow dung cookers, cow dung patties of wood, cooking thousands and thousands of offerings, and so many people assisting in so many ways. But he, the organizers of the Yatra said it was not possible. So we climbed a mountain next to it. <laughs> is Giriraj, the king of all mountains, the most sacred of all mountains. In fact, we have with us Mother Kama Giri. Kama Giri means Govardhan. It is the mountain that fulfills all one's innermost spiritual desires. In Vrindavan, Govardhan Puja is perhaps the most celebrated of all festivals. There is approximately 5,000 temples in Vrindavan area. Some are ancient and enormous. Others are very small in people's homes. But without exception, practically everyone prepares for many days, sometimes weeks, sometimes months for this Govardhan Puja. Why is it so important? Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, for several years, he wore around his neck and kept close to his heart a single stone from Govardhan Hill. Radha Bhava Duti Suvalitam Nomi Krishna Swarupam. In the mood of Sri Radha, in the role of his own devotee, Krishna in the form of Lord Chaitanya, in his Radha Bhav, was seeing that single stone as identical, the self-same Satchit Ananda body of Lord Krishna. Ishwara Param Aishwara Parama Krishna Satchit Ananda Vigra Anadira Dirgovinda Sarabhakara Krishna is the supreme controller of all controllers, this verse tells us. And his body is not a temporary material manifestation of the all-pervading Brahman. His body is such an ananda. It is eternal, full of knowledge, full of bliss. 
It is the highest realization for those who perfect their lives. The body and the personality of Krishna is the source by which the all-pervading impersonal Brahman is emanating. The highest truth. With Krishna's transcendental form and personality forever in the spiritual world, he is performing Leela, intimate spiritual pastimes with his devotees. That Satchit Ananda, that personality of Godhead, is the source of everything that exists, the cause of all causes. Govindam Adipurusham Tamahambajam and therefore the supreme object of worship for the eternal soul within all hearts. And the Srimad Bhagavatam explains Krishna stu Bhagavan Saya Vadanti with us. Not only is the Lord the source of Brahman and Paramatma but endless incarnations have appeared within this world to reestablish the principles of religion. The Lord descends to protect the devotees and to annihilate ignorance. The Asuras. The Lord appears within his name with all of his potencies. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu he is specially exemplified in his teachings and through his devotees that the greatest benediction for all humanity is that the absolute truth, the all attractive object of all love has descended within the sound of the name. But he also taught us that this simple little stone from Govardhan Hill was the body of Krishna. And with such love that Govardhan Shila was always covered with the tears of the ecstatic praying of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And to his most intimate, loving, an exemplary devotee, Raghunath Das Goswami, he gave that Govardhan Shila as a gift. The Param Guru of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Madhavendra Puri, he worshipped Gopal or Srinathji, the, the form of Krishna lifting Govardhan Hill. And this Srinathji or Gopal deity was one of the mo is forever one of the most important forms of the Lord within our tradition. By Lord Chaitanya himself, Rupan Sanatan Goswami and all of our Acharyas. In the Pushti Marg of Sripad Balabacharya and all of his descendants, it's the highest expression of love and worship is the form of Srinathji, the lifter of Govardhan Hill. And Guru Purnima, hundreds and thousands of Brijabhasis perform the Parikrama of Giriraj every year. Even Shankaracharya, who actually was Lord Shiva, who internally in his heart was a very, very great devotee of Krishna, but he taught many lessons according to various purposes he was assigned for. In Jagannath Puri, the name of his mat is the Govardhan mat.
Srila Prabhupada in his last days he expressed his desire to his devotees even though he couldn't even walk he couldn't even sit he said take me on parikrama of govardhan hill his doctor said if he goes he will die it's not possible the prophet said what better way is there to die than circumambulating govardhan hill but his loving disciples somehow convinced him not to go but during prabhupad's life he established the govardhan puja festival in hundreds and hundreds of temples all over the world today in china in russia in so many countries of africa in the in the middle east in australia in southeast asia every country of eastern europe and western europe all over america south america people are celebrating govardhan puja the same way the same way as krishna originally instructed about 5 millennia back by making mountains of food offerings and offering it to krishna and remembering the beautiful past time that is spoken by sukadev goswami and shrimad bhagavatam and has been elaborated upon through various other scriptures and acharyas so in order to join our brothers and sisters all over the world we will also try to briefly recount this beautiful past When Shiva Prabhupada was apparently in very weak health in around 1968 he just had several dozen followers and he went to Stinson Beach near San Francisco and he went to a place near the ocean in New Jersey where devotees took him to try to help him regain his health but it was not improving so shiva prabhupada requested take me home to brindavan and there according to radharani and krishna's wish they can either take me back to the spiritual world or they can make me better so when he was about to leave everyone was crying and shiva prabhupada smiled they said how are we going to spiritually survive without you Shiva Prabhupada said if you are chanting Hare Krishna and I am chanting Hare Krishna we are always together neither time nor geographical limitations can ever separate us that oneness of heart is a spiritual truth the festival of Govardhan hill it's evening now here in India that means except for in australia almost all the rest of the world it's afternoon or morning so there are hundreds and thousands of devotees enthusiastically preparing for govardhan puja and they will all be coming together to read or discuss this beautiful story
So with your permission, we will now join our brothers and sisters throughout not only the world, but the universe. At the time in Vrindavan, Krishna is just about seven years old. And he sees his father and the other gopas. They are making elaborate preparations for a religious ceremony. There were Brahmins arranging yajyas and there was all kinds of food being um, moved to various places and preparations for the cooking of the food. Decorations. Little Gopal asked Nanda Maharaj, Can you tell me? Krishna knew everything. Before I continue, this story is so special because it has such essential lessons that are critical for anyone who truly wants to advance in pure devotional service. There are teachings. It's also a story of how Krishna can take and transform even the most difficult crisis into the most blissful opportunity. Now sometimes, because there's so many beautiful lessons in stories, some people think it's not really a history, it's just allegorical. That great saints and sages have written these stories for people who like stories just to teach us so many nice lessons. Well, Krishna is so complete and perfect. He teaches us all of those lessons in his stories. But at the same time, for devotees who have deep faith in the inconceivable transcendental nature of the absolute truth, they understand, they they deeply relish the historical relevance. Because Achintya Shakti, for those with true and deep faith, in God as being the source of everything that exists, we accept He has inconceivable potencies. What are the potencies Krishna manifests right in the world around us? We're seeing all life is, every human being is just coming from a little seed. Incredible miracle. We see the sun. It just seems to be rising around the same time every day and setting around the same time every day. It's millions of times larger than this little earth planet. And the earth and so many other planets are in orbit. And the sun, it neither gets too close or too far. And the rays of the sun are evaporating water, making clouds, creating rain, entering into earth, which is just full of so many minerals and so many other invaluable elements. And food is grown in fruit trees. Incredible. One little seed this big, you plant it in the ground, and a few layers later, it's a mango tree. And there's thousands and thousands of mangoes blossoming on the tree. And each mango has another seed that could create another tree. It's inconceivable, unbelievable, how things work. When the source of everything that exists, the ultimate engineer of all the miracles of creation comes to this world, why should we think anything is impossible? 
If Krishna could put your body, your intelligence, and all your creative power in a little tiny microscopic seed that transfers from your father to your mother, what is it that he can't do? So if Krishna wants to lift a mountain, all we could do is say, Jai Shri Krishna. materialistic people who have a very, very... They don't even see the realities around them. They think, how can a little child hold up a mountain? That same God is holding up the earth. He's bigger than the biggest, smaller than the smallest. Through just one of his simple laws of gravity, what's he doing in this world? And the planets floating in space are not even within gravity. Everything, literally every single thing, from the smallest electron, neutron, atom or molecule, to the the vastest oceans made out of these molecules, to the biggest planets in outer space, Everything, if you analyze it close enough, is totally inconceivable, incredible, and miraculous. It's only when we do not tune in to the reality and truth around us, either materially or spiritually, that we think anything is ordinary. Nothing is ordinary. Everything is Krishna Shakti. Even the scientists, no matter how many years and centuries and millenniums they study, they can never figure out enough. There's always more, deeper, farther, more incredible. And that's just the material energy. What is the nature of the spiritual energy where everything is eternal, full of knowledge and full of bliss? Everything is of the substance of prem or ecstatic love. So when Krishna comes to this world, his pastimes, on one level they teach us so many good philosophical, moral and cultural lessons, but on another level, they're so charming. They're so amazing that if we just believe that this is my Lord, it awakens our love for Him. Our faith is not based on blind belief. Atheism is really based on blind belief. It's really blind to believe that everything's just kind of coming out of nothing, out of bangs. We're hearing so many bangs today. Some of them are little bangs, some of them are big bangs. But even if there were a big bang, not a... It's not that those firecrackers just appeared. Somebody made them. Yes? Sarva karana karanam. Why is it so hard to believe that everything has a creator? It's common sense. It's harmonious with every experience we've ever had. Every human being that's ever lived throughout history has had the same experience that what we see, there's a cause. Krishna is the cause of all causes. And he reveals himself in so many ways, in so many places. And that's the cause and the source of all the great religions of the world. 
But when we want to take God as someone, as something very ordinary, beyond our egos, and not be willing to humble ourselves before the almighty, inconceivable, unlimited power and beauty of God, then we fight over whose God is better. So when Krishna performs his leelas, it's fun. It's exciting. In the journey home, a book that I recently wrote, I tell one story when I was living with devotees of Ram. They didn't speak English. I didn't speak Hindi. But they would spend hours every day discussing Ramayana. It was just five or six sadhus. And I would just be listening. I didn't understand the content, but I could, I could feel the, the emotions that they were having. Sometimes they looked like they were being terrorized. They were so afraid. They were just talking. And other times they were laughing. So hysterically, they were rolling on the floor. It was a stone floor. And other times, they were weeping, crying. And other times, they were, they were, they just were practically jumping up and dancing. They were so happy. And I asked, what are you talking about? Tell me, tell me. And they wouldn't tell me. But I could understand that the pastimes of the Lord, for those who have faith, is the most incredible experience. Because it's the highest reality. Krishna, who's the supreme controller of all controllers, all the various aspects of God we read about in other scriptures who create and punish and everything else, they're all expansions of Krishna. But in order to invoke very deep, sweet, and intimate love, he appears like an ordinary child. And the residents of Brindaban, they had already realize God as the supreme ultimate power. All realizations of the absolute truth are contained within their love. But there was something even more. Madhurya Ras. An intimate sweetness where they could love Krishna or the absolute truth with such freedom. Like a friend to a friend like a parent to a child or like a lover to their beloved. So Krishna asked Nanda Maharaj, what are you doing? Tell me about this ceremony. Even though you may think I'm just a little boy and I may not understand, still I want to know. And you shouldn't keep secrets from your relatives and close friends. Tell me everything. And Nanda Maharaj explained that this is a tradition that our family, our community, for many, many generations have been following. It is called Indra Puja. Because we are an agricultural community, and we depend on the rain for our livelihood. And the deva, the particular um, deputed agent of the one Supreme Lord who provides rain is Indra. So if he's giving, we show our gratitude by offering him our worship. Krishna is in the heart of every living being. 
ईश्वर सार्वभूता नाम हृदय शर्जन ठिष्टि वेद हम समती था नि भारत माननी चार्जना ही नोज एवरीथिंग विद इन एवरीवन एनी प्रॉमिसेस इन की था कौन ते आप प्रति जाने ही न मैं भक्त प्रणाशति दैट आई विल प्रोटेक्ट माय डिवोटी इंटरेस्ट ऑफ डिवोटी how is krishna going to protect him indra is being honored he's being worshiped he has so much power he has so much beauty so much knowledge and so many living beings are depending on him indra was seen to have become proud and krishna wanted to liberate him from that pride and in the process do it in such a way that will fulfill so many purposes for so many people for the rest of eternity so krishna said to nanda maharaj yes we should be grateful for the devas because as we have been discussing lord ram told that there is no vice that is worse than to not be grateful gratitude is divine and it facilitates real devotion If we're ungrateful, we can never find any peace or happiness in our heart. We're always expecting something more and something else. But if we have a grateful heart, to attain a kampam susumin susumikshamano, whatever may come, Krishna, thank you. How may I serve you in this situation? and if we're actually grateful to krishna we'll be grateful to everyone in whatever way they help us shiva prabhupad he was speaking when he first came to the west to people many were drug addicts atheists they were eating all kinds of slaughtered animals after each one of propas propa was giving the highest truths to them he was giving them tradition culture philosophy that could transform their lives and what were they giving in return nothing but after every talk that propa gave he ended by saying thank you very much and he meant it he was grateful for all those people because they were engaging him in krishna's service to be grateful to our parents to be grateful to our friends to be grateful for the sun and the moon and the wind to be grateful for the food that we have sadira avidya ja we say prayer before we eat because we're grateful we die without food the yogis do surya namaskar the brahmins chant gayatri mantra to show our gratitude to the lord who has given us the grace of the sun that keeps us alive and gives us light we have so much to be grateful for and so many to be grateful for so indra puja it's it's the culture of the vedas to to teach us gratitude but the shrimad bhagavatam is the highest purana it teaches if you water the root of the tree the water goes to every part of the tree all the leaves branches twigs flowers similarly all the devas all the demigods all our forefathers all 
everybody that helps us in every way, they are all getting their energy from the root. From Bhagavan. When we render loving service to Krishna, then we fulfill our debts to everyone. But at the same time, to actually offer that loving service to Krishna and focus on watering the root of the tree by pleasing the Supreme Lord, we naturally see that everything is connected to Him. So we have gratitude and honor and respect and a will to serve all beings. This is Sanatan Dharma. So Krishna wanted to show that by pleasing Him, all the demigods are satisfied. But He wasn't presenting Himself as God. He was presenting Himself as the son of Nanda. He said, Father, ultimately everything happens by our karma. And on a relative level, this is the truth too. In the Christian Bible it is said, as ye sow, so shall ye reap. For every action there's an equal corresponding reaction. This is a law of nature. Just like the gravity, what goes up must come down. If you cause harm to someone, harm will come to you. It's just a matter of time. If you give happiness to someone, that happiness is going to come to you. So Krishna said, the demigods, all they could do is just deliver the karma that you have. So why should we waste our time worshipping Indra? We sh we're good people, we have good karma, we don't need Indra. After all, look, the ocean. The ocean's not doing Indra Puja. And they don't, the ocean doesn't even need water. And it's raining on the ocean. What kind of Indra? <laughs> and there's mountains. The mountains are doing Indra Puja. They don't need, but it's raining on the mountains too. So actually, you know, we're good people. The agent of our karma, all the demigods could do is just be instruments of our own karma. But in actuality, because in the Varnashram system we are Vaishyas, we are protecting cows and growing crops in agricultural fields. That's how we make our livelihood and survive. Govardhan Hill is providing so much grass and so much fresh water to our cows and providing so many crops for us. Forget Indra. Take all of the paraphernalia for that puja and let us worship Govardhan Hill. And let's worship the cows. And let's worship the Brahmins, because they're the ones who are blessing us, and they're right here, living among us. Nanda Maharaj, ultimately, he just wanted to please Krishna. So he said yes. And then Krishna, he actually engineered the whole Govardhan Puja. He gave very specific instructions of how it should be done. He said, let's take everything that we have for Indra and use it for the worship of the Brahmins, the cows, and Govardhan Hill. We'll cook mountains and mountains of nice food, rice and sabjis and, 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 and rotis and, and halava. And Prabhupada gives a whole list. And we'll... The Brahmins could chant their mantras and do their yajyas and we'll make all this food and we'll offer it all to Govardhan Hill and we'll have singing and dancing and, and, and music and then we will circumambulate Govardhan Hill all together. 
So was beautiful. Everyone in Vrindavan was blissful organizing the Govardhan Puja. And they made huge, huge mountains of bhoga. And they went to offer it to Giriraj Govardhan. And little Krishna, who was standing next to Nanda and Yashoda, he wanted to show how Govardhan Hill was none different than him. And as he was standing as a little child, he manifested simultaneously a gigantic form sitting on top of Govardhan Hill. And then Krishna said, You see, Govardhan, the mountain, is manifesting himself as a person to accept our offerings. And little Krishna bowed down to Giriraj. And all the Vrijabhasis bowed down to Giriraj. And then Govardhan Hill accepted within a moment all the offerings. The lakes and the mountains of Boga disappeared. And then Giriraj, with a thunderous voice, because he was a mountain. You may say, impossible, mountain becomes a person and talks and eats. <laughs> it's almost impossible to think that you could think it's impossible. If God wants to eat and be a mountain, Jai Shri Krishna. <laughs> it's the simplest thing to understand. And he's enchanting our hearts by doing it. Anior, he called out, give me more. But they prepared everything they had in their stock in the whole village. And he was saying, Aniyor, give me more. So Krishna arranged for the gopis to offer a tulsi leaf with love and devotion. And Govardhan said, I am satisfied. And Krishna said, Just see, he has eaten everything that we prepared within a moment. And then the next moment everything appeared again. Just as it was before, all the mountains and lakes of Volga or foodstuffs. But now it was Mahaprasad. Giriraj Mahaprasad. Anakut. Anakut. And Krishna arranged that Everyone was fed prasad. Wonderful prasad. Whoever they were, the Brahmins, the Chachis, the Vaishyas, the Sujas, the people who had no caste, all the cows were given, all the donkeys and the buffaloes and the dogs and the cats, everyone was sumptuously fed prasad. Which is an important principle. Krishna is the father and mother for all living beings. And Krishna wants everyone to be happy. So as devotees, as human beings, on every level, with a spiritual focus, we want to see everyone happy. And prasad is such a special way of making people happy. Because even people who don't believe in anything they like prasad. Prabhupada well, said prasad is our secret weapon. And because the grace of God is within that food after it's offered with love and devotion, it's transformed. There's spiritual potency. So it nourishes the body for health and in good intelligence because it's vegetarian and it's healthy and at the same time it purifies the soul because Krishna's grace is within that it awakens the love of the soul so 
So whether one is a human or an insect or an animal or a fish, a devotee is eager to give prasad to everyone. Because a devotee wants everyone to be happy. And at the same time, a mani na mani dena, to offer all respect. Vasudev the leper, he was compassionate even to the worms that were eating his body away. Because he was seeing the Atma, Krishna, a part of Krishna within the heart of everyone. So part of Govardhan Puja is this. Offering respect and joy to everyone in all species. And after this incredible joyous festival, everyone was dressed in their best. The gopis were decorated so nicely for Krishna's pleasure and to inspire each other. And the gopas were the same way. They decorated the cows with gold on their horns. They plated their horns gold and silver and their hooves. And they put silk embroidered coverings on their backs. And they did the same for the bulls and the calves. Everyone was decorated. Even the monkeys were blissful. Then they all circumambulated Govardhan Hill, singing and dancing together. It was the most blissful festival for everyone because it pleased Krishna. Ultimately, all the Vrijabhasis just saw how happy Krishna was. And Krishna revealed that he's none different than Govardhan Hill, that Govardhan Hill is his own body. And therefore, every stone of Govardhan Hill is Krishna. And at the same time, Govardhan Hill is playing the role of the greatest devotee of Krishna. So after the Govardhan Puja came to a conclusion, the Vrijabhasis, seeing Krishna's happiness, they were overwhelmed with joy. But Krishna had another plan. And that was to make Indra thoroughly miserable. He was totally insulted. Because everything was already arranged and prepared for him and he told the de- other, some of his associates, and this talkative little seven-year-old boy, Krishna, what I expect every year, for generations and generations, every single year on this particular day, they do this grand puja for me, and they offered it all to cows in a mountain. Really an insult. You see, when we expect things, we're very vulnerable to suffer. Because the nature of this world is you don't always get what you want. That's why gratitude can give us happiness in any situation when we are grateful to God, to Krishna, whatever may come. We have so much to be grateful for. We keep our mind on the positive blessings that we've received. And they're always there. But an ungrateful heart we expect We expect people to treat us in a certain way. And if they don't, we become very, we either become depressed or we become arrogant or we become angry or we become frustrated. We expect circumstances to go the way we want them to go. Yes, but destiny doesn't work that way.
even little tiny things could agitate us so much when they don't go our way. But if you don't expect them to go a certain way, they don't really bother you. So here's Indra. Because he was expecting this worship, he was totally insulted when he didn't get it. He got so angry, he lost his intelligence. Because Jayato Vishayan Pongsang, Krishna tells in Gita, when you have these material desires or kama, when they're not fulfilled, because your attachment that they will be fulfilled, you become angry. And anger causes a bewilderment of memory. From bewilderment of memory, intelligence is lost. Indra's a great devotee. He forgot that this little boy is God, Krishna, who's the supreme source of everything, including everything he has and everything he knows. He called the Samvartaka clouds. These are the clouds that especially come at the time of universal devastation. He ordered the clouds, rain down and destroy all of Vrindavan. Hare Krishna. In Vrindavan, very quickly, enormous dark clouds covered the sky practically put the whole of Brajbhumi in pitch darkness, even in the middle of the day. That's what type of clouds they were. They covered every, every inch of the sky, and they were so thick and so dark, not a single ray of the sun could even come through. But Krishna's toenails manifested a moon-like radiance that actually gave light everywhere. From these massive clouds, the Brijabhasis were looking up. There was thunder. Such a deep roar of thunder. <laughs> and then lightning limitless crisscrosses of lightning bolts flying in all directions it was really fearful the rain started coming down not in drops in pillars it was like a gigantic river that has been dammed and the dam breaks and the water just <coughs> rushes down. That's the way the water was falling from every inch of the sky. It was pouring down like a massive, massive... The whole sky became a waterfall. The winds were enormous and it became freezing cold as the lung, thunder and lightning were reverberating in all directions. The cows, their only concern was their little calves. With the hanging flesh that they have under their neck, they were covering their little baby calves with it to try to protect them from the rains and the winds. And the cows were crying, crying in pain, trembling from the cold, trying to protect their little calves' lives. And the bulls, seeing massive pillars of rain falling, they were roaring. 
And the Brijabhasis, they all ran to little Krishna. He was just their friend, their son, their lover. But when there was danger, there was no other shelter but him. Previously, there was an enormous forest fire and Krishna just swallowed it. So Krishna, you saved us from fire. Now please save us from this water. After all, you're the one who told us to do this Govardhan Puja. And now Indra's really, really angry. He's, he's trying to destroy us. And Krishna smiled. He lifted the Govardhan hill. Just like a child lifts a mushroom. Or like a huge elephant lifts a blade of grass. And he held the Govardhan hill over his head. He stood on a little hill before he did it. And he held Givadiraj. He held it with the little finger of his left hand. Which is really an insult to Indra. And very blissfully he said to the bridge bosses, Now, under Govardhan Hill, see, it's just like our own home. It's our village. Giriraj is so, he's so happy that we gave him that Anakut ceremony, he's become just like an umbrella to protect us. And there's beautiful pastures under Govardhan Hill for our cows to graze on. And there's lakes and there's swans. It's so nice here. Everyone come and let's have a festival under Govardhan Hill. Bring your cows. Let everyone come. And all the Brijabhasis rushed under Govardhan Hill. And Krishna said, as I was lifting the hill, when he lifted the hill, there was an enormous sound that reverberated all over the world. <laughs> and Krishna explained that Govardhan, because he was so pleased with us, as, the, as he was being lifted, earth fell all the way around from his borders and created like a wall so that none of the water could get in that was falling on the ground. As they were all standing under Govardhan Hill, they were gazing upon Giditari. With his arm raised, hoping the hill effortlessly, he smiled upon them. Kavikarnapur in his Ananda Vrindavan Champu describes that every single devotee, every calf, cow, bull, gopa, gopi, brahmin, everyone there, the peacocks, they all saw Krishna just gazing with love on them. Krishna's Rasa Bihari. Even though he was standing and everyone was in a circle around him, limitless people, everyone was seeing Krishna just looking personally at them and smiling upon them. His smile was beaming with ecstasy. And each person under Govardhan Hill was reciprocating with Krishna according to their natural love and he was reciprocating with them. The gopis, seeing the beautiful form of Krishna and his smile and glance upon them, they took that, that vision of Krishna into the very core of their hearts and embraced him. And he embraced them in response. He was satisfying all of their most intimate desires. Continuously. 
And the gopas, they were joking with Krishna, laughing with Krishna, playing with Krishna, each one of them in their own ways. And the servants of Krishna, they were offering so many things and constantly Krishna was reciprocating with them. And the cowherd man and, the, and ladies who were of Nanda and Yashoda's age, Krishna was... With parental love they were looking at Krishna and Krishna was reciprocating as their own personal child. Nobody wanted that reign to ever end. Everyone was just with Krishna. It was so beautiful. As Krishna was holding Govardhan Hill with the little finger of his left hand with his right hand just to give further happiness to everyone he began to play his flute Murli and Madhu Mangal one of his cowherd boyfriends he said Krishna don't play your flute please don't play your flute because we have seen what happens when you play your flute. Everyone becomes in ecstasy. Giriraj, when he hears the sweet song of your flute, he might become ecstatic and fall unconscious and fall off your little finger. And then everyone will be destroyed. Or we have seen when you play your flute, the song is so sweet that rocks and... rocks and solid objects melt in ecstasy and become liquid and liquid in ecstasy becomes solid so the sweet song of your flute if Giriraj melts in ecstasy then we will all drown and another cowherd boy because they were all joking together said no no Giriraj is a very sober person and great, great Mahants, great saints, even when they're in ecstasy, they keep it very internal. They do not reveal it externally. There are so many beautiful pastimes that took place underneath Govardhan Hill. Meanwhile, on top of Giriraj, the Sambartaka clouds were extending their full extent of all their energies. They were sending such enormous winds to try to somehow or other blow the mountain off the tip of Krishna's little finger. But they couldn't. So much rain was pouring down, lightning bolts by the millions were striking against Govardhan Hill. But all the animals on Govardhan Hill, they were happy. <laughs> they were just smiling and dancing around as if nothing was happening. It's described that for seven days and seven nights, Indra was devastating the Govardhan Hill. But with all of his strength, he could not move a single grain of dust from, Mok from Giriraj. He could not remove a single flower or leaf from any tree. And Giriraj was getting brighter and brighter and more effulgent. Why? Because underneath Giriraj, he was being touched by the finger of Krishna. And Krishna's smile of being pleased with Giriraj thrilled Govardhan Hill so much that Govardhan was Paramdristvani Vartate. The happiness of being touched by Krishna and Krishna being so pleased was giving Govardhan so much happiness that all the thunderbolts, the wind storms, the, and the massive rain was insignificant. A 
eventually Yashoda Mai, she was really in her motherly love. She was saying, Krishna, you look so tired. Your stomach looked so caved in. All the others were thinking, no, no, he looks so happy and he's making us so happy. But Yashoda, she's saying, no, no, he's my child. He's revealing himself in this way. Please eat something. Put your flute down and eat some food. And she was making cakes and tambulas and so many things and telling the coward boy Subal, please give this to Krishna. Krishna was smiling. And to reciprocate with Yashodamai's love, he put his flute down for some time and was eating and chewing and holding up Govardhanya. It describes that outside there were rainbows and there was downpours and there was clouds and underneath the hill, Krishna's complexion was like a rain cloud. His peacock feather was like a rainbow and his smile upon every one of the Vrijabhasis was like an unlimited downpour of happiness. Finally, the Sambhartaka clouds, they went to Indra and they said, we're on the verge of death of exhaustion, we give up. But Indra became even more angry. And with all of his powers, he was trying to somehow or other cause some harm. But Krishna, Indra couldn't even separate a leaf from a tree. And everyone was happy. Everyone was singing underneath Govardhan Hill. And finally Indra understood that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of God, the Lord of my Lords, the Lord of all the gods. And all the rain went away. Giridhari told the cowherd men and ladies, he said, now the sun is shining, the rain has ended, everyone go back to your homes. The boys herded the cows out from Govardhan Hill. But when they saw Krishna still standing there, they didn't want to leave him. All the limitless cows ran back and made a circle around Krishna. And Krishna with his eyes, he was lifting now, he was lifting Giriraj. With his eyes, he herded each and every one of the cows personally out from under the hill. Then effortlessly, he just dropped the great mountain of Govardhan exactly where it was before. And then with his friends, he went around to inspect how everything in Vrindavan was. Everyone was just talking about Krishna. It was really something to talk about. That's why we have Srimad Bhagavatam. Nasta Prayeshu Bhadreshu. We want to hear, when we hear Srimad Bhagavatam about Krishna, about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, about the various avatars, about Ram Leela, so many things to talk about, to enchant each other. So they were all simply meditating upon and discussing how wonderful is Krishna. Indra was feeling so guilty. He was sober. His arrogance was totally smashed. I tried to kill God. <laughs> I tried to destroy all Krishna's beloved devotees and the cows and his whole village. He didn't know what to do. 
he approached, he approached Brihaspati, his guru. His guru said, you're in big trouble. Better you go to Brahma. He approached Brahma. Brahma said, you're in big trouble. <laughs> you, sh you will be forgiven only when someone who is loved by the Lord intercedes on your behalf to ask Krishna to forgive you. Krishna loves the cows. Go to Sarabi, the mother of the cows. Here is Indra, the all-powerful, wealthy, worshipable god of the heavens, humbly coming before a cow, asking her, please approach Krishna and ask him to forgive me. So Surabi said, let us go together. And Indra walking behind, coming behind Surabi, approached Krishna. Krishna went to a secluded place where nobody else was around to not humiliate Indra any more than he already did. And Surabi, the cow, said to Krishna, Indra is repentant. Please forgive him. There's a place called Surabi Kund as part of the Govardhan Parikrama. Very sacred and important place because that is where Krishna forgave Indra because of the appeal of Surabi. This is a holy principle that in this material world due to our egos we have committed so many offenses to Krishna for so many births we don't even know what they all are. But if someone who loves Krishna prays to Krishna on our behalf to forgive us, then Krishna is sure to forgive us. That is why the connection with the Guru, the connection with saints and Vaishnavas is so important to us. Hiranyakashipu was forgiven of everything he did and given liberation because of the prayer of Prahlad. Narasimhadev, please forgive him. Durvasa Muni was forgiven because of the prayers of Ambarish Maharaj. Jagai and Madhai were forgiven because of the prayer of Lord Nityananda Prabhu. But we have to be sincere. Like Indra. Indra humbled himself before Surabi. He recognized her superior position over his simply because of her, the simplicity of his devotion. She didn't have the knowledge and the riches and the glorification that he had, but she loved Krishna and Indra recognized that. And he humbled himself with a completely sincere heart to Surabi. And Krishna recognized, Indra has humbled himself before my devotee. I will forgive him. And he took, and he instructed Indra to learn his lesson. 
and Indra and all the other devas honored Krishna and performed a beautiful Abhishek for him. The Govardhan Puja represents forgiveness. It re represents how Krishna protects his devotee by showing us what's really of value. Surabhi represents simple devotion. Whether we're the king of heaven or whether we're a little cow, if we have that simple devotion, we can please Krishna. Thank you very much.